Hello everyone, welcome to part four of the Stratasys Rebuild project. In front of me I have a few parts that I'm hoping to integrate into the printer in this video. The main focus of the video is going to be getting the smoothie board finally integrated into the machine. I have uh, three main objectives I want to accomplish in this video. The very first one is getting the gecko to talk to the smoothie board. I have this DB25 breakout, so I'll connect this side to the um, gecko G540 and then connect the pins directly into the smoothie board. So hopefully I can use the smoothie board to talk to the gecko and ultimately get the motors moving. That's step one. Step two is I want to get the limit switches and end stops communicating with the smoothie board as well. So then um, hopefully by the end of the video I can get a um, homing sequence done. And then the third thing I'd like to accomplish in this video is controlling the heated chamber. I have um, some thermistors that I just got, so I'll be integrating those into the chamber, hooking those up to the smoothie board, and then I've got some solid state relays here that I will use to control the heaters. So let's get to it. The smoothie board comes in a couple of different configurations and a couple of different, you know, uh, kit styles, I guess. I end up getting the 4X, which has four stepper drivers on it. And one of the main reasons I did that is because the lowest end one, like the 2X or 3X, I guess, they don't have the MOSFET outputs. And I might end up needing those for controlling some of the fans. So I just went ahead and got the 4X, which has all these stepper drivers on it. And who knows, maybe this project really won't work out and I'll end up using this board for something else. So I figured, you know, why not just spend a little extra money and get that. I also got the board in kit form, which means all the connectors are separate. So I needed to put all those on. The reason I got it um, with the connectors separate is because I really wasn't sure what all connectors I was going to use where. So I just put on what I need. And as I go through this project, you know, I'll just put on extra headers and connectors as I need them. So let me explain what's going on here. I've got the DB25 breakout connected, backed up to the G540 over here. And looking at the manual for the G540, I figured out you know, what all the step and direction pins are. If you remember from previous videos, a stepper motor just needs ultimately two signals to work. It needs a direction, which direction it's moving, and then a step, which is the pulse that makes it go one step. There is an enable pin and a ground. The enable pin really isn't used right here. It's normally made to enable a stepper motor. However, with the um, G540, it kind of already has it enabled all the time. I could tie that in, but eh, I don't need the enable pin. So no enable pins for right now, just the direction and step. I'm using one ground pin because all the grounds are tied together. So there's no reason running three separate grounds when one will do just fine. I've got power coming to the board from the power supply. I've got 24 volts going into it. I don't think I need this. I read the manual on the smoothie board and apparently the 24 volt is only for the stepper drivers themselves. I think it might be used for the MOSFETs as well. We'll see, but I've got 24 volts hooked up just because I've got the five volts hooked up from the computer through the USB for logic. And then over here on the machine, I've got the um, power supply, the 48 volt power supply going into the Gecko. So everything is wired up, everything is powered up. So I'm gonna go over to the interface over here and um, I'm going to take the X axis and move it this way. Oh, a little bit more. There you go. So the X axis moves. I'm gonna move the Y axis back a little bit. A little bit more. So that moves just fine. And the Z-axis, which you can't really see, but it is beautiful and it's really nice. Um, I'm gonna move that up a little bit. You can at least hear that. So that moves as well. So I've got the X, the Y, and the Z both communicating through the smoothie board, through the G540. The next thing I need to do is set up the steps per revolution, all that good stuff. Um, I had the calculations done in what part two for Mach three, but I need to carry those over for the smoothie board. If you go to smoothie board's website, I think it's smoothieware.org. They have a really good explanation of how to do that. So I'm not going to go back into it, but there's some good tutorials there on how to do it. So I'm going to calculate based on the belts and the pulleys and the micro stepping and the steps and all that, how far I should move. And then I'm going to double check that those calculations are correct so that when I say move one inch, it moves exactly an inch. 
And then this step, the first step is done. I'm going to move on to the limit switches and the end stops. Okay, so I've got my steps per millimeter set up for the X, the Y, and the Z, and I just copied the settings over from Mach 3, double checked them, verified them, and so that's all working. So when I say move, you know, 10 millimeters, it moves 10 millimeters. So that's fantastic. As you see here, I've got um, my three wires for my X, my Y, and my Z. I've got these connected onto the max, and I'll kind of go into that here in a second. The good news was back in part two, I found all the end stops that were on the um, wiring harnesses and I hooked those up to the G540. And the cool thing is those are um, outputs and they actually get transmitted along the DB25 cable. So really all I had to do is just take those three pins and tie them into the smoothie board. As you can see, I'm only using three wires or one wire for each axis. And the reason behind that is back at the G540 over here, I have all the grounds tied together. So I'm using the reed switches on the machine and the switches are, you know, like this and they're normally closed. And when metal comes into contact with that little gate, then they open up. So I have one side of each one of the three switches connected to a common ground over here on the machine. And then the other side is connected onto the G540, which then in turn is connected to this breakout and then in turn connected to the smoothie board. So it makes it relatively easy because I only need these three pins. So now that I have this hooked up, let's go to the machine and I'll show you kind of how the origin and coordinate system looks. Here is a look inside the machine. As I said earlier, I'm using the max inputs for the limit or end stops. And let me explain that. So I'm at the front of the machine. So that means that X positive goes like this, Y positive is like this, and then Z positive goes like this. If any of this is confusing to you, you might want to check out my intro to CNC video on axes and offsets. It kind of explains how the coordinate system works inside a machine like this. So if we go to the Y and the X positive direction, we're going up this way. So that means the maximum limit would be something like that. And you might be able to see that there's a um, read switch end stop here and then also a read switch end stop here and here. So these are the two that I'm using for the X and the Y. So when the machine homes itself, it is going to the maximum position or the highest that it would ever be in terms of the X and the Y. So there's a couple settings inside the smoothie board that you can use. Um, when you do the homing sequence, I think it's home to min or home to max is like the setting. And that tells the machine that when it's homing, which direction it goes. And it was normally set to minimum. So the machine would normally want to try and home this way, which would be the minimum movement. So I had to switch that to change to the maximum movement, which is over there. I also had to do the same thing for the Z axis since it's going to be homing up. I don't want it to go all the way down into the base. And there's also a similar read switch down here. So that's how the um, end stops and homing is working. I will have to do a little bit of configuring to find out exactly where my origin will end up being. And um, I'll go into that in much later videos when I get more to the fine tuning and um, setting up of everything. But yep, that's how the end stops are working and it works great. Let's just do a quick homing sequence to show you what happens. So now we're at the fun stuff, the heated chamber. As I mentioned in the previous videos, this doesn't use a heated build platform, it uses a whole heated chamber. So the whole chamber gets up to temperature and it accomplishes this with two big uh, 300, 350 watt heaters, one on either side of the build chamber. And then down here, there's two 24 volt DC centrifugal blower fans that blow up over the heaters and onto the build platform. So I need to control two things. The heaters themselves are gonna be relatively easy. They are 120 volt AC, so I'm gonna use a couple solid state relays to control those through the smoothie board output. And then the 24 volt fans 
are just always on. The way this printer works is as soon as you hit the power switch, those fans kick on instantly. So for initial testing, I think I'm just gonna leave it like that and just turn on the power to the machine. Uh, the brain's disconnected, so it just kind of turns on right now. So I'll leave that like that for right now. So all I have to do is turn on the power, the fans will turn on, and then I'll use the smoothie board to actually control and regulate the temperature of the heater modules. I think this goes without saying, if you're not familiar or comfortable with dealing with AC electricity, don't do it. It's dangerous, you can get hurt. What I've done here is somewhere in this rat's nest, from the AC outlet here, I've just um, wired into the power supply. This is the power supply for the motors. Um, I wired a second set of wires that go from the AC out, one that goes over here, and then one that passes through the solid state relay. And then I have um, this little switch right here. When I plug these in together, it sends a voltage out of the power supply into the solid state relay, turning it on, and thus allowing AC to flow into the heater. I only have one of the heaters hooked up right now. It's the one on that side, which is the one I have exposed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug all this in, turn it on, use my infrared thermometer, and see if it's heating up. This is just kind of a test to see if it's working and if um, it heats up. And then eventually I'm gonna make this a little bit prettier, a little bit more safe, and then hook up the solid state relay into the smoothie board so that the smoothie board can control the relay. Looks like the heater is slowly rising in temperature. I started out around 58 degrees and um, 63 in some places, 67, 70 degrees. So yeah, it's definitely heating up. I can't really feel anything off of it right now, but yeah, it's definitely getting warmer. So that's a good sign. I'm gonna let this heat up for just a little bit. I don't wanna get it too hot. Um, but yeah, that's a good sign. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side to make sure that one's working. And oh, there's some weird sizzling. I don't like that. Oh, I don't like the sizzling. Can you hear that? Oh, it's really strange and unsettling. So I'm going to test out the other one on the other side, make sure that's working. And then I'm going to button all this up, close it up, attach the relays and then start um, with the smoothie board and see if I can use the smoothie board to control those solid state relays. And that is about 110 degrees, so I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, I just got done testing the other side, the other um, heating element, and so both the heating elements are good. I also tested out both fans on both sides, so all four of those are working just fine. And I also kind of cleaned up the wiring a tiny bit here. The reason I had to do that is because to test out the heated chamber, I need to put the sides back on this machine. So with all the wires and everything drooping over, I need to kind of clean it up just enough so that I could put on the sides. And so let me kind of explain what's going on here. The solid state relay is still down here. It's connected back up to the smoothie board. All I had to do with the smoothie board is redefine the output pin for the heated bed temperature. Normally it's going to one of the MOSFET outputs, but you just have to redirect it in software to this little pin over there. And if you need to know more about that, just go to smoothieware.org. They have all the instructions there and that's all I did. I just followed them exactly. So that's why I'm not really going into much detail there. Additionally, I have a um, thermistor here hooked up inside the chamber. There is already a temperature sensor inside the chamber, but it's a thermocouple, and thermocouples can't be directly read by the smoothie board, so I used a thermistor instead. But I have this unplugged right here so I can connect it into my little um, handheld doohickey, and I can read that against what the smoothie board is reading, so that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna put the sides on this, and then we're gonna see if the heated chamber can get up to temperature and see if we can control it with the smoothie board. Let's do it. Okay, here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna turn on the printer and then everything else looks good. 
So fans are going and let's see. Let's connect to the board. Everything looks good. Solid state relay is off right now, so I'm going to hit um, some random temperature, I don't know, maybe like 30 C or something like that, and then see if it kicks on. Yep, solid state relay is on, and I've got a reading of about 16 degrees inside the chamber. This says about 18, and so yeah, we'll just give it some time and see if it actually warms up. So yeah, the heated chamber is working through the smoothie board, so that is pretty cool. So that is objective 343 for this video. I've got everything moving with the smoothie board. I've got the end stops all configured and those are working out fine. The homing works and the heated chamber works, so that's pretty cool. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the smoothie board. It seems relatively easy to use. When I was looking at the documentation online before I started this whole project, it seemed a little clunky and cumbersome to use, but honestly, after using a little bit, it is a nice little board and it's very well thought out. So that's nice. Props to the smoothie board guys. Um, let's see, what is next for this project? So it's almost to a point to where I can start printing something, but I need to control the extruder. So the extruder is a big one. That's going to be complicated. At this point, I'm not sure if I'm going to use what's in there or completely gut it. So that'll be interesting. I also need to do something with the build platform itself. I still want to do something like a mix six plate that I can remove and swap in and out and do like a PEI bed on top of that. And then also I'm going to do something to address the filament situation here. I kind of have a little special top secret project that I've been working on, so that might take a little bit of time. So ultimately I've got about three things left to do with this printer before it's actually usable. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for those videos and see you next time.